Hello and welcome back to the channel. I just thought I would show you these nice collection of Datsun Stanzas. Well, obviously, as you'll notice, this one's got Nissan and the other two are Datsun. So we'll have a little walk around this one. This is absolutely immaculate, this one. The other two are more like kind of projects in the working. We'll go on the other way and I'll go up to show the mileage. So it's only got 30,000 mile on. 1980, oh. 1984. So this is the newer one of the, of the three. But as you can see, this is full on immaculate for a car of this age. Our original Datsun Nissan Mats. I remember them in the prairie. 34,000 mile. And look at this. The seats, not a mark on them. I'll jump in inside. All these switch gear, if you've ever had an 80s. Nissan or Datsun, all this stuff you'll uh, recognise. I remember this out of my prairie, all the same. See, adjustable wipers, intermittent setting. That was big back in the 80s. Let's see if it does it. Little but All these are exactly how I remember. My granddad used to have a sea wedge Nissan Prairie, but apart from all this was brown. Same steering wheel. Again... How complex is this for a car of the day? You would normally have a like a, like a third dial to control all of your heater controls. And these are push-in switches. And I can hear that noise there. They're actually vacuum operated. And you can hear that noise. So they're still moving, even though the car's off, off the reserve vacuum since the car's been switched off. So that's a good sign that because it holds its vacuum. And look at this cassette system in in a totally different area i would imagine that's probably an optional extra um and obviously you've got your period correct radio i remember that on the prairie as well oh your heating and your fan you've got your nice little ashtray 12 volt socket rear wiper remember that was an option rear wash and wipe that was a was a big deal back in the day heated rear screen i'm sure that on few cars was rear fogs just fantastic it's like just going back in time Oh, and that clock, proper quarters clock, great, fantastic that. Go out to the back, I'll have a look in the back. All these little bits of chrome, normally hanging off and missing and, you know, and none of this stuff's been replaced, it's all all original, and that's what I like to see. Them back seats, clearly they've never been used. And you know when something's been cleaned, all the sweat, like the fabric goes, and that's just like the day it left, it's fat, like the factory. And them mats... I do remember those in an l -Wedge Nissan Toronto, brand new. And I remember, obviously not with Datsun on, but with Nissan. They never changed the style of them any. Backs of the seats never had kids kicking them. Like a lot of these cars would have just been family, family hacks. The back, I love these plates. Everybody back nowadays are buying these to try and fit in, but yet this car back in the 80s comes standard with them. Lovely, love original plates. 1600 GL. Anniversary model, got to love that touch of a car show, eh? Where there's original picnic blanket and a peak cap, eh? that's great. Oh, and there we go. See, that's probably the reason, like, I tell everybody on my videos, I'm going to do one about why a wax oil a car, like I did with mine, brand new, is do this to a car when it's new, and hence, the, he has me reason. How old is this car, Chris? Be 30? 84, so it's 37. 37 years old. And that's why this car's like this. I'm not saying it hasn't been garaged, and if you, you know, if you just use a car regular, these ones, I'll come to them in a minute. That's the difference. I'm not saying that's made it like this, but it'll certainly be a reason why this car is like it is to this day. And look at this. I must admit, Chris used to give me wrong. I was a stickler for keep changing plates and taking off horrible stickers on, well, newer cars. But stuff like this, if you ever get a car like this, just leave them on. It all adds to the to the age of it. Nissan building in Britain. There weren't this car wasn't built in Britain, but they were actually building the Nissan factory at the time. Hence if you look, you see like this is this has got Nissan badges. These ones are only like a couple of year difference and they were Datsun. And you'll have realised on the badges of some of these cars in between, it what would it would say it would say Datsun, Datsun built stands up by Nissan. By Nissan. So this was on a big changeover year for these. But a lot of people watching this video, you probably either, unless you, you remember these when they were new, you'd have probably never seen a one. Because I'm big on my Nissans, and um, I, until Chris got them, I had never... Because I used to have an E-Reg Nissan Sunny Pulsar, and everything on this car pretty much matches the Sunny. 
So a lot of the stuff on them, they're just like a bigger car, really. These aren't kind they? of sat between the Bluebird and the. Sun. Yeah, they were more. They were more like a kind of a what's the word like a like a luxury version of the of the, the Sunny, sun. weren't they? That's that's the way I put it. But look at this man. Every door, you know, you look at the bottom there. I mean, I'm a stickler. I, I work on cars every day, and you know, you're getting cars which are five and six year old, and you can see rust getting into these areas. And these are, and if you look at all these little black marks and stuff there, that's all that corrosion protection that was added probably thirty years ago. Them arches, you know, you've got your marks and stuff, but I like all this stuff. To, if you want to scrape that down and repaint it, it would look rubbish. I prefer to have the original paint on the car, and that just shows that the car's been used. A lot of the, lot of the little marks that are on the car actually came from when it was in, in the garage. They're in, sitting in, in a garage. garage. It sat in a garage garage for 32 years, from 87 to 2019, and it was just full of rubbish, bags of rubbish, bags of Christmas decorations, and it was just like scraping, like people moving people along the side of the car. People scraping past, stuff on it. But it adds to the story of a car, like all these little bits here and stuff. People will be straight away on scraping them down. I hate that. I just every mark on a car to a degree tells a story. Yes, don't get us wrong. You don't want a whole scrape down the side, but every little mark and dent adds to its to its history. That's just my opinion of it. Like these wheels here, I like that. You know, they've got the chrome trim. You know, it just looks nice. That's just that, that's what would make me buy a car like this. Wait, you know, if, if one come up like this, I wouldn't even hesitate. I would buy it. It's as simple as that. These things here, again, as I remember, I, as a child, my granddad had an, a, a Nissan Prairie, a Sea Reg one, and I used to spend all my time sitting in the front of that car, going on family holidays. And my seat was the front passenger seat, and my grandma used to, have to go in the back, and this was my little cubby hole in the Prairie. I used to keep all my toy cars all sorts of bits in these and these are just fantastic uh ideas that they had back in the day you know wh why have a handle why not make a handle into a luggage compartment you know and, they, and you've still got your door pocket again got this nice you know sound deadening at the bottom and it does actually make a difference to where uh, the sound quality in these cars and this is when nissan were trying to big their game up you know and adding extra luxury and like these carpets so thick Compared to your modern cars, it's like a full-on thick pile of carpet, you know? And look, it's stood its time. It works, you know? Like, these are the things that a lot of people, if you're interested in this stuff, you know, you'll understand with cars like this. Look, look at the headlining. You know, you look at a luxury car back in the day, half of this stuff, like, on the British Leyland things and even your Vauxhalls and Fords, all this stuff will probably be drooping down. This is immaculate, you know? And I'll show you these examples on these cars, which are very much a different league to this, and you'll still see that thing stand up to the test of time. We'll have a look under the bonnet. See, it's got the anniversary. But uh, under here, you'll see that's like a lot of black stuff. But this is, I was just telling Chris, this is what a lot of these cars got put on with before they come across to the UK. So that, would, like, when they're coming across on the container ships, when all the salt spraying onto them and stuff, this was put on. And what, what it was is part of, what do you call that? The... the the PDI inspections, this stuff had to actually be removed. This might have been put on as part of the corrosion protection, but back in the day, you could request certain things to be left on. Like, again, on my dad's Tirano in 93, he requested to leave the plastic on the back seats uh, for, the, for obviously myself and my sister when we were babies, kids just at the time. And I would imagine if this might have been original, somebody might have just requested to have the wax protection left on. As you can see, the bits where it's been rubbed off, I'll not put the whole chassis number in, where the bits have been rubbed off, you know, it's absolutely like brand new underneath. So, you know, it's, it definitely works. And this is a 1600 Nissan engine, but if you have an 1800 Prairie, the 1500s look very much the same. In fact, a lot of Nissan's engines, in my opinion, were almost the same, just different bores and stuff, but these are, are a fantastic engine. Uh, they, you know, the, it, it's just simple, simple engineering, but you know, they have got an electronic carb, these, haven't they? Like, part uh, yeah, part electronic. So, you know, they're the only kind of issue that can be quite finicky to set up. Um, it's trying to just find a specialist. If anybody knows anybody who sets up carbs, Chris would be interested. No, just leave a comment below. In fact, anybody at all who's into these cars or you know anything about them or you've even got any parts, stuff like that, just uh, let us know and I'll certainly pass it on to Chris. But, you know, it's just such a nice car. I wish I could put this up on a lift and you'd be able to um, see it underneath. I haven't yet seen it underneath, but by looking at it from the top surface, it would be fantastic. You know, I think these wipers as well, not strictly 100% original, but I think they just fit in so nice with the chrome on the sides. 
So again, the last pair there, little, little things. Like, is that have the back doors got them on? I don't think the backs do, but you know, just your little. I do remember them. They were standard fitment. If you have a three-door Nissan Trivano, I can guarantee from a child, they were identical. Three-door Nissan Trivano. I remember that. Little things on Nissans always carry them across. Um, it's great. And what was this? 1980. 84. 84. And that's just this is my point with Japanese cars. 84. And that same Astria was used in a 1990. Three Nissan Toronto, but I do know they carried on right up to nearly 2006. So it just shows you this is what I like about Toyota Nissan. If something works, they leave it alone and they keep using it. And this is, I think, where the problem with French cars they try to improve and change things too much. And that's where you start getting you know, if you have a bad run of stuff, that's where they get a bad name. But all kind of Japanese cars keep to the things that work, and I think that's just a, a good way to be. So we'll move over to the other ones and wait I'll, I'll go straight to the interior on this car and everybody again from the 80s i hope you like the color red because you're in for a surprise look at that huh have you ever seen an interior as red as that in your life and again by the odd tiny little bit of um plastic that's faded you know that and remember this car is nowhere near on the standards of the other one and this has probably had a very... Was this used as some kind of a... It was a parts car. Like a parts a, car, you know? Car. So this car's been sat around. And, you know, like, the seats aren't going mouldy. You know, you just need to leave a car... Modern cars now. Some of these new, uh, like, Fords and stuff, within a few months, you're getting mould coming on the steering wheel and everything. And look at this. It's great. And when you're comparing this to the other one, everything's exactly the same, just very red. Um, you know, it's got all the seat belts. I would imagine these seat belts would have been fitted as an extra, because back in the day... These didn't need seat belts, even for an MOT, I don't think, on this, yeah. I would have to no, check the manual, but they, they, I don't back. think they did. Oh, in the front, yeah, in the back, these, the back will have been, these will have been as an optional no. extra. But, you know, like, when you look at this car, this has just been left to stand outside. Not Obviously, it's got the chrome things missing, but that isn't 100 times worse than what's on the other one. So, you know, and look at these arches here. You know, that's a little bit going down there, but that's nothing. That's not, like, you know, bad. So to say this is just a part car, it's all the quarter panel. Of a field where yeah, it's, got, it's been where stood it's in been a field. For about three years now. You know, it's been stood in a field and it's been st stood out here for quite a while. And ever, you know, it's got green moss and everything on, and everything's still just spot on. You know, and this one, Chris, tell, the, all, the all five speeds, but this one, it's got the four speed in. Really so it's a really early one. Oh, and actually, as you can see, everything inside is just you know, it's looking tired but to the point because it's been stood in the field but it's certainly not i would say looking you know like desperate like so, some cars i've seen when they've been standing for periods of time they they just go i mean look at these front wings here i mean there's a bit where it's been caught there but look at that you know you, you, you get 10 year old volkswagen but well, less than 10 year old volkswagen golfs and stuff and the front wings are starting to bubble up there's just no rust like these chips and that like any car if you've got a mark on them you know so, as you can see, it's got all the original plates on them there. And the big difference between these two cars, there you see a Datsun. Just on the changeover, yeah, the other one, where they become, they become Nissans from, from Datsuns. I'll open this. There's not a great deal to see under this bonnet. I don't think, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Everything's there, just a few bits missing. Yeah. But again, when you look at it, compared to the, what I would class as a show car, this is very much at the opposite end of the scale. Look at these strut tops. What? They are solid. All down the bulkhead down there. You know, where the battery is, where the battery would normally leak. It's nothing. Nothing at all. No rust. In fact, there's your main... Your main sub... sub uh, the subframe mounting points. And they look just as good as... In fairness, is a car that's flipping... A hell of a lot new, newer than this, and all this slam panel here, it's great. They normally go down there on these, on the radiator points. They look rusty, but they're, they're actually really solid. You'd expect that to be rotten in half by now. In fact, if you look on this on Micra, say, what would they be like a, like a, like a two thousand and two, two thousand and three Nissan Micra? They would be rotten out. So they're definitely, I do believe, these are definitely built much better quality than, uh, you know, we'll give them credit definitely. We'll have a look down here at the driver's side. I'll just jump in. Again, not a lot of miles. 
62,000 mile. And you know, everything's just still there and works. It's great. Now, when you're looking down at the sill area and stuff, you expect them to be totally gone, but they are really solid. There's just a bit of surface corrosion, but it's great. The boot's just full of, full of bits, so I'm not really need to uh, fill them in there. But Chris was saying, this is the oldest car of the lot. Um, and he was saying the reason why this is four-speed and the other ones aren't, this must, clearly with an interior like that, even back in the day, this interior was kind of a desirable thing, but it obviously had to be publicised. So what we think with this car, this must have been some kind of like a, like a demonstrator, one of the very first into the country, because obviously it's got the four-speed gearbox. There are always little signs when something is one of the first in and it must have just been brought in just to be like a short like like a, what would it be like a demonstrator yeah, car this um is february 82 and they weren't launched until yeah. april 82 so this is february 82, 82 months and so this was like this this basically this car was registered two months before the first ones were actually put out on the like you know like like released officially so you know again it was a little bit not too much money this car could be made into something worth super rare hatchback you know saloon now so you know this one again i would like to argue nearly the point i could be wrong it's got to be one of the last few with that interior there can't have been many of that so it, it might only, be the only one there's only a handful of them left anyway yeah there's only a handful left anyway so you get try and get a four-door saloon with a red interior i think this could be the only one left as well as we move to this one i think chris believes that this is the last three-door datsun stanza yeah. left Again, looking a bit sorry for itself, but I know this isn't the original colour. Chris, tell, we'll, we'll go into that at the back. But you know, it's got it's this one again. These aren't nothing like this the other one's car. This sat in a garage um, until recently for 21 years, since 1999, 2000, it was in a garage. So this is sat in a garage for a lot of years. Again, believe it or not, a lot of people say about cars sitting in garages, um, you know, like that the kind of um, is a good thing, but sometimes for getting little marks on cars, Leaving, um, leaving them sitting in garages, getting knocks and bangs with grass cutters and stuff getting put on them. So, you know, I, I know that for a fact. I've left cars before uh, in storage areas and they're getting quite serious damage. I really like these um, alloys. They are alloys, aren't they? They're not yeah, just, yeah. They're, they're original to the car, we believe. Original? They're, they're Pardat, like a Datsun alloy. They're very, very the good, though. extra, yeah. I'm just looking there on Firestone uh, tyres as well. Yeah, they're Brand new. Tires, yeah. So that them alone will be worth something but this you know like the three door again what well, this has got more of a a gray kind of interior this one where this got seat covers on um you know and this one like this one's got the most kind of used miles you know 100 and 117 thousand mile and you've got to remember back in the 80s but that like was, well, yeah, go on, that was you know, 82 to 2000 to 1999 so that was 17 years so, so 17, 17 years so but what you've got to remember is you know i'm only 33 i remember when I was just young, starting out my dad's garage, all he was ever doing was rebuilding Ford engines, Vauxhall engines, head gaskets, everything. Uh, everybody will know at the time, I think, what, 50, 60,000 miles was as much as you would get out of an engine before you had to start doing major jobs, piston rings, all that kind of stuff, head gaskets and things like that. Where with these, you know, if this car had been looked after like the other one, with 117,000 miles, I still think it would drive as good as a car half its age you know and again if you look at this one and the other one these have got the five speed box in you see and you look in the interior again all the same kind of things luxury extras what you wouldn't get back and this has got an aftermarket cd player and all the same switch gear remote i all the remote release you know being a three door you've got that there we go i used to love them as a child in a three door car you would get that extra storage space again ashtray which I remember out the Toronto and them little storage containers were very similar as well. So, you know, they never need to keep changing things too much on them gas struts there. And obviously they're the original seats. I can see dog, I can see dog hairs on them and everything. And, you know, this car's been used, but look at that. There's no rips, tears, signs of wear or nothing. Um, you know, I'll just pop that at the back. I'm going to go around the back. I've just got to walk on a fence, so if I fall over or something, you know what's happening. <laughs> And here we go, you see. Now, there is the original colour of this car. Can you see it? Do you know what that colour's called, Chris? I'm not doing no... Um, medium blue, I think. Medium blue, but again, mm. I think this would be great 
Spend it, it's going to go back to the original colour. Spend yeah. a bit of money on this, and I think this would look fantastic back to its original. And again, the spare wheel well down there. Look at that. Solid, you know. Little signs of rust starting to come in, but all in all, you know, light in the boot. These things, you just, these weren't... Nowadays, we get sat nav and heated seats and God knows what, but these things were a big deal back in the day. You know, it's... Um, it didn't come as standard. Exactly. Maybe. Rear wiper was a big deal back in the day, wasn't it? You know? But look at this on the back here. Again, I love to see this. You know, that to me is worth getting a car for just to sit in again. This has got that, the Z-Bart uh, rust protection. And again, this could just be another reason why this car is still here and it exists, as well as that one. And that one might have just had the sticker removed or whatever, we don't know. But, you know, you got to remember there was, what, thousands, tens of thousands of these cars made. So for these ones just to be left with these stickers on, again, it, if you buy a new car and you plan on keeping it and you want it to last, get it done. I did that with my Mitsubishi, it was the first thing I did to it. Get the under seal done. And again, nice little touch there. That's in Stanza by Nissan. If you notice, the other one, the, the good condition one, just says Nissan, because that's obviously a B reg that had moved on a long time since these. Seems all got the same the engine. The the yeah, and right. they've all got the different lights, you see. You now the three door had the different lights to the five door. Again, to the, I quite like the back of these saloons. Even though that light's looking a bit tatty, I think this looks great with the dual fog lamps on. I don't know. that They're, they're not a good thing for me, having saloon cars, for having a dog in that, but there's something about... I do tend to like saloon cars of any range, any particular car, because they just seem to be more rare, especially in the UK, because not many people there uh, go for them. They don't seem to have the appeal in the UK. It's either a three-door hatch or a five-door hatch or an, an, an estate. Don't think they did an estate on these, did they? No. No. But, uh, yeah, so if you, you know, if you like to see this kind of stuff, let us know. Me and Chris are always getting weird and wonderful kind of cars, not the kind of cars that you see every day, even though I'm going to start doing some reviews on yeah, more kind of average cars but as and when i can i'll get these done so if you like what you see put a comment below like subscribe and thank you for watching